While switching the lights off at night, I found something very, very strange indeed. This unit, which is a little ozone unit, and I bought one of these a while ago, and I made a video about it, and I've kept one in the fridge since to give it a long-term test, and it's been fantastic. It just takes a charge into an 18650 every so often, and then you put it in the fridge, and it'll last for a very long time, just putting out a whiff of ozone every so often to keep food fresh in the fridge. It works really well. It stops mould growing in cheese. It's just actually very good. However... Uh, this was another one, and it was just sitting on a shelf. And as I was switching the lights off, I noticed that the LEDs in this were on. I thought, oh, I must have bumped the switch. So I pressed the switch in the front, and uh, it just went through settings, but it didn't go off. So I opened it up, thinking the switch was jamming. And uh, even the switch clear, it was uh, not working. So let me show you this. Let me see if I can actually make it do it. So I shall zoom down. And I don't know if this will sh show, but there's some LEDs along the end here. I shall try and hold this on to the battery tag. Ugh, it's going to be tricky. So the LEDs have lit. And they're just actually just randomly flashing still. They're just basically, it's you can't turn it off. I don't know if you can see that. The LEDs just doing weird shit. Let me just, uh, no, it's just not responding to the button at all. So... This little button here, I couldn't see anything obvious in the circuit board, so I tested across it. Brings in the meter with horrible new leads. These are so stiff. Uh, meter down where you can actually see it. Uh, focus down onto there so it's nice and crisp. And if I then probe across this switch, now obviously you're going to get a diode in one direction because it's directly connected to the chip. But when I probe across it, I'm getting about 7k... And then I put it round the other way, and this is where you should get a fairly high impedance in, but theoretically. But we're getting 13k. I would have thought that would have uh, just been uh, perhaps the diode showing conduction in one direction, but not the other. Uh, however, let's get the soldier iron and take that switch off. I th I'm suspicious the switch is faulty. And if we take the switch off and the fault clears and it doesn't power up, uh, then that will indicate that. Now, this is going to be very, very fumbly because it's a tiny little switch, one of which I don't have spares. I have a sneaky suspicion this might be tin whiskers if it is the switch. Tin whiskers are a molecular level growth of little whiskers of tin, as the name implies. And they're a bit of a curse to the electronics industry that was introduced by the uh, the eco warriors banning lead from everything because lead was actually part of soda for a reason it wasn't just it wasn't just added accidentally it, it was supposed to it was there to make the soda malleable and avoid problems like this i think they've mitigated it now but but it is still cropping up it's rearing its ugly head it caused lots of problems for the manufacturers Suddenly things that should have been reliable were not reliable anymore. Right, how am I going to get this off? I shall try leaning it forwards. This is very, very small. This is a tiny switch. I'll zoom down so you can actually watch me screw it up. Uh, let's see if I can get this off at one end then. I don't think I'm going to get this off. I can try juggling between the connection points, but, but that's getting very hot very quickly. This is not, this is not a joy joy thing. Uh, this is where fingernails might actually be handy. But I don't have fingernails because I bite them off. Or trim them off. Whenever I've got the Dremel going, the fingernails bite it. That is... I'm meshing this up big time. That switch is definitely not going back on. Ah, uh, this is this is not straightforward. Tell you what, I'm going to pause while I take this off so I don't torture you with the process. One moment, please. Okay, the switch is now off. Let's test across the circuit again, see if we're getting that uh, reading in both directions across those soda pads. So in that direction, I'm not getting anything. Another direction, I might get something because there is a protection diode. There's a protection diode. Measuring at 6.6k, I wonder if that's a coincidence that it's at 0.6 volts. So that has removed the leakage, and that means the switch was... Shorting out. Now, this is the third tactile switch I've had short out, including 
the one that controls the start and pause on my washing machine. Suddenly it kept going into pause and start and pause and start. And I ended up taking the panel off and I, I wasn't aware of just how bad the tin whisker problem is with these. But when I, uh, I'm going to open this, but I, on that circuit board, I took the circuit board out of the washing machine and I removed the switch and replaced it with a new tactile switch. I initially thought maybe moisture got into it, but no, it was dry inside. I'm going to open this to see. And uh, changing it for another tactile switch solved the problem. So I don't think I'm going to see anything in here. Really not going to see anything in here. There's a little tactile disc has popped out. Um, that's probably cleared the fault. Can I see anything in here at all? There's a possibility that even just by... Uh, Desoldering it, it's melted the little whiskers again because they are literally molecular level. But anyway, that has cleared the fault. And if I power this up now, you'll see it go through a little LED self test routine. I'll zoom down that so you can actually see it go through its little self test routine. So initially, when you power it up, let's see if I can get a good connection here. Let's see if I can actually get a decent connection. That, that'd be a good start. So it does its little LED test, and then it stays off. So removing that switch has uh, got rid of the problem there. Now, if I short this out with a pair of tweezers, well, these pads work as well. Oh, if I can, I might not be able to short these out with a pair of tweezers. That is, it's trying to do too many things with my fumbly hands. Let me connect that. and try and break through the flux. Oh, this isn't working. No, this is not, not convenient. I'll, I'll test this and I'll tell you if it worked one moment. Okay, I have solved the issue there by soldering a little button on. It's not the correct size of button for in here, but it'll do. And if I shield this so you can see LEDs and not stick my fingers on the high voltage output of that, when I press and hold this, it should power up and go into a suitable mode. And if you click it, it should go through those modes. And then if you press and hold, it should strobe them and then go out again. And as long as it doesn't wake up again, that is it fixed. But to be honest, I was measuring resistance across that. It cleared when I removed the switch. Therefore, I would say the switch was faulty. So if you have some equipment, I mean, these tactile switches fail in two ways. They either go extremely high resistance like you can you start off you have to press and wiggle it to actually make it operate and then it just stops conducting at all but the other one is they can bridge themselves out when they bridge themselves out they can make things turn on and off themselves so that's a, a nuisance but it is a thing but uh the answer is you can get these switches whatever the switch is i'll find a replacement on ebay and i shall get a pack of them maybe because it's cheaper getting a pack than one uh, or a, just a selection pack, in fact, is a good option. I've got selection packs of these ones that go through the hole, but not the surface mount. But uh, I shall get some uh, a selection pack of tactile switches and I'll just replace it and that will fix the problem as it usually does. But that is it. Uh, I think the moral of the story here is that you have to be aware that tin whiskers, they really are a thing. They cause all manner of problems and things like tactile switches and other circuitry and miniature circuit boards in particular. But uh, but that is an issue that we just have to deal with, and it's fairly straightforward to do so.